Okay, this video is going to be my top fifth, my top 14 lures for dirty, muddy water situations. Um, uh, Tactical Bassin done a video like this a couple weeks ago, and I thought I would do a video on it as well. Um, these are my 14 favorite lures for dirty water, muddy water situations. I got uh, two crankbaits, two topwaters, a jerk bait some bladed baits, a couple jigs, a swim bait, and three worm rigs. Um, the crankbaits, I got a I got a nine foot diving crankbait and a five foot diving crankbait. Um, the jigs, I got two different size and color jigs. I got uh, two different per uh, presentations on the bladed baits. And I got my favorite type of swim bait as well. Um, first, I'm going to go with top water and then I'm going to work my way down through the water columns. This here is a, Re a Rebel Pawpaw. It's a P90 Pawpaw. It's in a, a foxy shad color and it's kind of a, a clear color and you think it would work a lot better in uh, clear water but I don't really uh, fish a whole lot of clear water. I do fish uh, a one lake that has clear water but this here done a lot better in the muddy water um it's got it's got some nice rattles in it it's got a good color it's got like a blue back some chartreuse through the side a red eye and then sort of a clear silver belly um, i really like that color i think it represents a little bluegill a little brim something like that um it's got that feather tail like all pop waters do um i think it's a really good bait it's got that red mouth like 99% of the pop bars do. Um, I think it is a good bait. It's got good hooks as well. Um, next is a black popping frog. It's got a little popping mouth. This here is a frog that's been used a lot. I caught a lot of fish on it this past uh, summer, the end of summer, when I first started fishing frogs. Um, this frog here is a Matsu uh, frog. I think that's how you say it, Matsu, Matsu, uh, something like that. It's a frog I got at Rural King over in Indiana. Um, it looked like a good frog. It was my first ever popping frog, and on my first cast, I caught about a two pounder in front of, in front of my dad. Uh, I basically just flipped it up next to the bank and twitched it twice and caught a big two pounder with it on the first cast. So I know. That this is a good bait. I also got a Spro popping frog, which is out on my frog rod right now outside. Um, but this here is just a bigger frog. And if you want to go with something smaller, uh, you can get the Spro popping frog, or they also make a smaller size of this. Um, now I'm going to go with the jerk bait. This here is a Bass Pro Shops XBS. Uh, jerk bait. It's a floating jerk bait. It's got a red belly, silver sides. Um, it's got sort of a squared off front. It's got good rattles in it. It's got good rattles in it and super sharp hooks. I just hooked myself there for a second. Um, it's got that black spot there. Uh, it's a really good. It's got it's got big oversized eyes. It dives about maybe two, three feet, uh, depending on how uh, how hard you twitch it and how fast you reel it and stuff like that. It's got good hooks. Um, I haven't really used it a whole lot yet. Um, it's not really jerkbait time yet. Uh, I bought this down in uh, Memphis Bass Pro Shops at the Pyramid. If you guys have never went down there, you definitely have to check it out. It's an awesome place. Me and my family had a blast down there looking at all the... Uh, exhibits and all well not really exhibits but all the aquariums and stuff and I bought quite a few different lures down there including this one here now I'm going to go with the square bill this is a strike king uh, a two point or no sorry this is a strike king 1.5 it's a chartreuse black back uh, shad type of color it's got the black spot and the red gill um, this dives about five to six feet. Um, it's got really good hooks. All striking lures have good hooks. I've said that before and I'll say it many times again. They all got good hooks. Um, this here's the silent. I think the uh, 
uh, color is loud enough. I don't think it really needs rattles. Um, you can buy the ones with rattles. I think I just think that the color is loud enough. I don't think you need rattles. I think something this bright of color with rattles is just a bit too flashy and loud for the fish. I think it would be about like uh, it just, in my opinion, putting rattles in a bait this bright color doesn't really uh, seem uh, appetizing, I guess, to a fish. I mean, some big, bright thing rattling through the uh, uh, water doesn't really uh, want to make you attack it. It kind of makes you think it's a lure. But uh, that's just my opinion. I'm sure a lot of you guys probably have different opinions. I'm sure a lot of them pros have different opinions. That's just my opinion. This here is a Rapala 9-foot diving crankbait. Um, this here is a glass shad. Um, it's got that, uh, like a plate in it. Uh, so I think it's called like a prism plate or something like that. It makes it look green. Then it makes it look kind of purple. It makes it have a lot of flash to it. And this one here, it's got good rattles and good hooks also. Um, this one here is a lot different from the chartreuse. The chartreuse is one color. This here kind of translates from green to purple to silver. Um, that's why I bought the one with rattles in it. Next, I'm going to go with the bladed baits, or the, the uh, vibrating baits. This here is an underspin. It's made by uh, Rooster Tail. It's a 3 8 ounce Rooster Tail in shad color. It's got the treble hook. Um, this is the only one I own, but I really do like this color for dirty water. Uh, it's got a lot of flash, and it's got a little bit of a smaller presentation than the chatterbait, um, which I'll show you here in a minute, the chatterbait. Uh, this is the uh, chatterbait compared to the uh, inline spinner. Uh, a lot of people call these inline spinners. Some people call them rooster tails. Um, I just call them an inline spinner. Um, now, people, some people think that these are only for uh, bluegill and crappie and panfish and stuff like that. But I've seen uh, guys up on, uh, what is that lake's name? Um, I can't remember the name of the lake now. It's a uh, lake up in Michigan, I believe. And they catch big old huge smallmouth on these. Um, if I think of the name, I'll put it down in the description of the lake. It's a, uh, it's sort of an odd name. It's not like a regular name of the lake. It's got, it's been known for its smallmouth though. Um, this next one is the chatterbait. This is the white Z-Man chatterbait I've had in many other videos. It's got the short little, uh, junior swimming fluke. Um, that's a Z-Man chatterbait. Um, it's got a good hook. It's got a good skirt on it. It's really bothering me. I can't think of the name. Uh, anyway, sorry about that. This is a good chatterbait for when the water is dirty. Um, I like using it for uh, dirty water uh, when the grass is just starting to grow, when uh, the grass is just starting to die off, uh, fall, summer, winter. Well, not really winter, but if you are going to fish something like this in the winter, what you want to do is you want to cast it out and basically let it sink. And that blade just does sort of a little action like that. It sort of just shakes. And I've seen a lot of people you catch them like that using a chatterbait. Next is this thing right here. I've only thrown it a couple of times and haven't caught anything on it. It's a... Uh, I think it's called a Lucky Strike Legends or something like that. It's uh, basically like a clear bill chatterbait. Um, it's got really good action. I put a Berkeley Pit Boss uh, on the uh, trailer, and it's a perfect representation of a bluegill going through the water. Um, so I, that's the reason why I put this in here. Um, I got a bluegill presentation, and then I got the shad imitation. Um, if the pond or the lake only has bluegill and they don't really bite shad colored baits, this can be good. Or if the lake's got a lot of crawfish, you can take this and buzz it just above the bottom and it looks like a crawfish or a small bluegill. It looks really good going through the water. It's got a really good shimmy action to it. 
and it's got like a clear flexible bill which acts as a weed guard as well now I'm going to go with the swim bait this is the yum swim bait which you've seen in some of the other videos um, if you watch those it's the same exact yum swim bait these are good when pre-spawn, post-spawn, uh, summertime, just sitting there slow rolling it around docks and trees. Um, it's got a big boot tail, which I like in dirty water situations. It puts off a lot of vibration. Now I'm going to go with the uh, bottom contact worms. This here is a Lucky Strike uh, ribbon tail. It's a, sort of a blue clear flake color with a reddish pink tail on a 3 8 ounce uh, football head shaky head jig uh, it's got a screw lock on there um, I've caught a lot of fish on these kind of worms uh, my dad he always used to use these worms back when he was a kid they they stood the test of time as he says uh, they still sell them a lot of companies still sell them he used to catch a lot of bass on worms the same type of color uh, this color and also purple with red tails. This here is a bruiser bait. These these here, the hook in the worm is what I got in my mystery tackle box uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, this is a really good bait for dirty water. I caught a couple on the other day. Um, this is a, uh, I think it's like a plum color, or no, um, June bug color. It's uh, when you hold it up to the sun, it, it looks blue. And it's got that green flake in it, makes it really pop in the uh, dirty water. And then this here is what I call the jelly worm. This is a Lucky Strike made lure as well as the ribbon tail. Um, if you ever go to Walmart, you see those things. It's like 128 uh, bass things in it. Uh, you get these types of worms in it. That's where I got these and the ribbon tails. This here's got all kinds of different flakes. It's got green, pink, black, blue, all kinds of different flake in it. it. Makes a really good small presentation for bass around docks. Now for the final two baits is a, a brown jig, and I changed the trailer on this because I was fishing some dirtier water, and the uh, other fish, the fish weren't really biting the uh, pumpkin color trailer so I switched to this crawl this crawl here I got in my mystery tackle box it's a uh, big bite bait swimming crawl it's in black neon color black with red specks in it on a root beer colored jig and I caught two fish uh, flipping it around the end of a tree in deeper water um, it's a good bait I like using these baits um, I like using them swimming crawls during the dirty water uh, puts off a lot more vibration. And then the final jig is this finesse blue and black jig with a Bama Craw uh, color uh, craw on it. Puts off a lot of vibration in the dirty water. It's a Strike King Bitsy Flip jig with a Yum trailer. Um, puts off a lot of vibration. It makes a really good flipping jig around lily pads when the water's dirty as well. So I hope you like this video. Uh, leave a like if you liked it. Um, later on this week, I think I'm going to do a video about how I killed my biggest buck, or not my biggest buck, but my first buck ever, um, with a shotgun back six and a half years ago. Um, it's a little six-pointer, but I think it'll be a pretty cool video to do to sort of uh, tell a story of how I killed it. It was my first buck. It was my second day out deer hunting um, with a shotgun. It was my basically. It was literally the second day I ever went deer hunting by my with my own tags, and I killed my first buck ever. And it was pretty cool. Um, if you want to see that video, put a, a comment down there. Say, hey, I want to put. I want to see the video. I think it'd be cool. Something like that. Um, if not, say don't do a lure video or something. Um, hope you like this video. If you do, put a like. Um, thanks for watching.